Am I the a-hole for refusing to help my 21 brother, 24, with his kid 5, ensuring a medical emergency? So, my brother and I don't have a relationship. I cut him off when I was in high school. After one day, I came home early and saw that my brother and my girlfriend were fling on our couch. Since then, I've seen myself without a brother. I've held this conviction for the last few years. He has tried to get me to forgive him as we've gotten older and had apologized, but I refuse to forgive him. I avoid him at the family function and if he tried to speak to me, I pretend he doesn't exist. My family has tried to get me to forgive him, but I always say it's his fault. It's like this, not mine. A few nights ago at around 2 in the morning, I get a random call from an unknown number. It's him and he's begging me to drive 45 minutes from my dorm to his house so I can watch his kid. His wife was having a heart attack. It was just angina. And he needed someone to watch him while he goes to the hospital. I asked him how he got my number. He said that our mom had given it to him while she was away in case of emergency. I told him that I wasn't going. He begged me. He said he needed his brother's help. He said if I help him this once, he'll never talk to me again. I told him no and it wasn't my problem. He begged again and I hung up and went back to bed. Come morning, my phone is full of texts from my sister and my mom telling me how awful I am. My brother had to call up our sister and left his five-year-old alone for three hours while he was at the hospital. They all told me I was awful and petty for holding a grudge this long. I feel I did nothing wrong. He betrayed me first, and these are the consequences of his actions. Am I the a-hole? So here are the top comments. From what, who, why now? I'm going to go with not the a-hole. As it turns out, in case of emergency, you can in fact wake a kid up and bring them with you to the hospital. What you really can't do is wait 45 minutes for the babysitter to show up if you think someone is having a heart attack or leave a 5-year-old alone for 5 hours. Here's also a comment from Snakes in Your Pants. On the flip side, while I was waiting in the ER waiting room, a lady with her child were escorted out by security despite her having a note from her doctor saying she needs immediate emergency attention. Don't know for what as she didn't shout about that part. But I know these kinds of notes are a thing due to getting one myself when my doctor thought my appendix was about to burst because she insisted that no one can watch her child so he had to be there with her. This was also during one of the first waves so admittedly it might be more relaxed than I saw. But considering how much Omicron is filling our hospitals combined with staff shortages from vaccine mandates and people isolating, I don't really think it would have gotten much better than it was when I had to go to the hospital. To add, I know that isn't the same as original poster situation. I didn't compare or even try to draw similarities to original poster situation. Someone said they've seen parents allowed to bring children in, and I shared with them that I've seen the opposite. Not every single comment is going to be speaking directly to or about the original poster. Another comment from PJ The Rock, he said, A lot of NICUs banned parents during the first wave. They banned my husband and there was talk of banning mothers as well. I camped out at the hospital because I was so afraid that if I left that, I wouldn't be allowed back in. I had to wear a mask 24-7 under threat of being escorted of campus by security. W.S. Close said, I had a kid summer of 2020, so I know all about a crazy stupid 
BS hospital administrations and health departments are pulling. My hospital told me that if I tested positive while in labor, that they would quarantine me and my husband from my BB immediately after delivery. Thankful I didn't, even though it's not what is recommended for newborns. NICU is a different story. We spent overnight in the NICU a week later for unrelated health issues with my baby. NICU, no joke, felt like a virology lab. Gloves, gowns, masks, and airlocks. Another comment. I had my third in the first lockdown. My husband couldn't join me until I was mid-labor. And we couldn't bring our others and had to use my mom. Which would have broken quarantine rules had she not been staying with us for a month previous because she sheltered in place. Three dogs, six people, 1,400 square feet, but that's another story. I would have had to have my baby at home three weeks early if I didn't have child care. A comment from Lefty Trash 161. Strong agree. I have terrible hospital anxiety and do not do well in a hospital setting by myself without a support person. Nonetheless, if I need to go to hospital during my custody time, my partner stays with my six-year-old at home and I go to the hospital alone. Because who the f would think it's appropriate to leave a child that young at home by themselves? At the end of the day, it's much safer and more responsible for me to leave her supervised and either call a friend and ask them to meet me at the hospital or to just explain my situation to hospital staff and ask for some value. Also, in regards to options, you're exactly right. These brothers have been estranged since they were teenagers. And original poster has openly stated he is not interested in changing this and that he goes out of his way to avoid his brother. Why then would the brother rely on original poster and original poster alone to be his emergency contact and help him out? Poor planning on his part does not constitute an emergency on original posters. I don't doubt that brother's wife's medical situation was real, but all this crap surrounding it really just feels like a ploy to get him talking to his brother again, not the a-hole. Here's another comment from I'm not a werewolf. Not the a-hole. You live 45 minutes away. You weren't a person to call regardless of the status of your relationship with your brother. Even if you'd been willing and got up and gone there immediately, what has he gonna do with a kid for those 45 minutes? And that's 45 minutes just for the actual driving. You couldn't have been there in less than an hour. Here's another comment. He probably won't. It feels like the parents will just take his side and turn on original poster. And for what? That he didn't want to do a massive favor for someone they can't stand? Surely, one of them should have a friend or whatever nearby. It's extremely irresponsible to have one emergency contact to someone who doesn't want anything to do with them. Gosh, it's so toxic and manipulative. And finally, a comment coming from Swimming Amoeba 7. Why couldn't he just take the kid with him? Leaving the kid alone should not have been done. I think it was a bit cruel on your part, but as I can think of several alternatives like friends or co-workers, or just bring the kid, not the a-hole.